What's up guys, Evasion here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Kyrian Covenant ability for rogues. And uh, I have to say, I like this one a lot better than the Night Fae ability. Even though this one got nerfed yesterday, it used to give like 3 call points and now it gives 2. Um, we're going to get right into it. Alright, so here we are at the training dummies. And basically, Echoing Reprimand, the new rogue class ability for Kyrian uh, Covenant, is... It's like a harder hitting... Kind of similar to Shadow Strike, but it has a secondary effect. So basically, it hits about 50% harder than Shadow Strike and only costs 10 energy. We can hit one right here. Um, and basically, what it's going to do is it's going to highlight one of your call points. Uh, it's kind of buggy at the moment. It doesn't always seem to detect that I'm on the right amount of call points. But basically, if you're on three call points with this lit up one here um, and no more, uh, if you use it, you'll get a seven call point finisher, which is kind of cool. So you can get some pretty potentially hard hitting eviscerates. Um, with things going on though, like uh, shadow techniques, it can be hard to get this ability off on the proper amount of call points, especially in PvP, which uh, you know shadow strike or shadow techniques is not always something that you're 100% able to pay attention to. Um, so that can definitely make it a little bit harder to utilize properly. But nonetheless, the ability hits good. It kind of fits well into the rotation. It feels like it's worth pressing. Those are all kind of things I look for in an ability. Pretty good burst ability. I like it overall. And uh, it definitely kind of synergizes well with Subtlety. That's that's the class ability, and we're going to talk about the other ability too. Summon Steward here, and he's going to bring you three potions. And these are essentially health stones on steroids. They heal you for 20% health, and there is Soulbind uh, abilities that modify how these will work. Summon the Steward here, He'll, wherever he is. Brings me over a potion, you know. You don't have to actually open this menu for it to work, it'll just give them to you. And with how potions changed in Shadowlands, basically, if you're in combat and you use a potion, actually, yeah, I'm full health here. I'll have to change that. So basically, if you use a potion in combat, um, you know, it'll heal you, and then it doesn't go on cooldown until you leave combat, which is normal. But this timer has changed from one minute to three minutes. Um, so the chances of you getting to use multiple of these potions by stealthing away and like dropping combat for. Uh, period of time is probably lower, but still having access to one of these is really good um, because of the soul binds. All right, hopping into the soul binds part of this video. Oh yeah, also basically the uh, steward, the potions that you get from this guy, they actually uh, remove all disease, poisons, and curses. And the reason why I was confused about this at first is because I thought that this effect itself was supposed to be part of the soul binds, but it is just attached to the vial. And then there's one that uh, modifies it, I believe right no it's not this one it might be this guy here guy it is totally the other dude right here so ascendant file pretty much when you press it uh, it makes you immune to curse disease poison bleed effects for eight seconds this could be insane um but still you only get to use it once per game so but uh the guy that i've been playing with the most obviously because i have him unlocked here is uh this uh mechanicos i can't even pronounce his name dude that's what we're going to go with. We're going to call him that. Anyway, so basically this one here, you have uh, Brawn, and I don't really actually care about this. He does some decent stuff, and he's pretty tanky. It's kind of troll. I kind of wish that this would just be removed from the game. I don't know, but he's here in this tree, and I wanted some of the other stuff. So basically, uh, one of our, I'll talk about the conduits in a second. We're just going to talk about the trees first here. Uh, Forge Light Filter, this one's really good. This is the reason to play this tree probably. Um, when you get reduced below 35%, you'll automatically drink uh, your your file. And the reason the reason why this is good is because the only time you really die as a rogue is when you can't play the game because you're stunned. So having a heal of 20% HP when you get reduced below 35% and you're stuck in a stun, that can be really good. That'll make you live. Um, the last right here, so they just buff this. This thing's kind of stupid too, and it could potentially be the bane of sub rogues. If people know how to abuse this properly but after standing still for five seconds basically it's going to reduce the uh, duration of incoming stun and incapacitate stuff by 30 percent and it lasts for five seconds once you start moving so you'll see like right now because my character's standing still i actually have this buff but as soon as i move my character it goes away after five seconds um so the neat thing i guess or annoying thing maybe is <clears throat> if somebody throws you into a mark for death kidney um, and then they follow it up with a cheap shot, you're going to DR the hell out of that cheap shot just because, like, DRs and 30% reduction. Um, I don't believe this stacks with Relentless, but I haven't got to test that yet. 
um, because Relentless says does not stack with similar effects. So I'm assuming that wouldn't stack. I think this one's pretty dumb. I kind of wish stuff like this didn't exist in the game because it makes uh, abilities feel less impactful. Um, and that's what we don't need in the game. That's 100% sure. Uh, so the other two options in this row, this one here, it could be good as other classes, but not as a rogue. I'm assuming this is DR'd with, uh, you know, the rest of the abilities that I would press as a rogue. So I don't think it's good. But I'm gonna mostly talk about the sub conduits for this one. Um, Cause I, I kind of think that the other two specs conduits are kind of trash. So starting off the potency conduit for Kyrian. Um, is Echoing Reprimand's damage is increased by 50%. If you're playing this Covenant, you should probably play this uh, this Conduit unless it's like, you know, you really just don't care about the damage this ability does. But I think that's, that's probably the main selling point of this ability. The combo point thing is kind of a bonus um, due to its, you know, it's kind of a little bit hard to control sometimes. But yeah, so you have that one and then you have four uh, specific ones for sub too. Uh, basically, Eviscerate and Black Powder, which when you press this is going to give you more shadow da uh, shadow damage for 8 seconds. Because there's a shadow damage portion of Eviscerate, this could be a pretty viable one to have. Um, because in PvP, we're always all about uh, increasing anything that's going to help us during our burst windows. We have Shadow Strike increases damage by Backstab, and this one I talked about in the previous video. Depending on how this one scales, this could be fun to make a build around. Symbols of Death increase your crit chance by 4%. Seems kind of trash. Don't really like this one. The shadow Techniques can reduce the remaining cooldown of Shadow Blaze in one second. Uh, this could actually be pretty good. For the Finesse Conduits, there's some pretty decent stuff here. This one's kind of interesting. When you land Kicks, it's gonna reduce the cooldown of Cloak of Shadows by two seconds, which I think is awesome. Like how many kicks would I actually get in that time? So I could get up to like six kicks in that time, unless people were getting literally kicked on cooldown. So you could reduce it by like 12 seconds. It's not really that big of an increase, but it's kind of a cool effect. The Shadow Step uh, has a reduced cooldown by 10% and the maximum range is increased by 12. I don't really like stuff like this that modifies the standard cooldowns of my abilities. Not really what you want to see added to a game. You want the abilities to stay relevant just the way they are. They shouldn't need some kind of tweak to be good. Um, and then the last one here, energy cost of kidney shot, cheap shot, sap, distract, reduced by 10%. Um, if energy was actually ever an issue, this could be good. Uh, and then for endurance conduits, we have when you enter stealth, you get a 10% shield. And you also have Slice and Dice heals you for up to 18% over 36 seconds. This one is not actually as good as a lot of people might think because of how fast the game's pace is. And that's why I hope the game's pace stays fast. Because I do not want the playstyle that we used to have in Kata where we're just immortal during Recuperate to ever come back to the game. That was the stupidest shit ever. Uh, we don't want that. Kind of skipped over it, but I'm going to briefly talk about the other two trees here for the Kyrian Covenant because there's some decent stuff going on in them. So this first one here, Pelagos, I think that this one could potentially be better than the other one, other than the fact that you get the, the file when you're low HP. Like, we like that. That's a really good effect. This one, when you press your Echoing Reprimand, which you're always going to do near the start of a burst, or at least you would if you have this ability, um, it increases your mastery by 233 for 7.5 seconds, which turns out to be, uh, speaking from sub point of view again, about a 15 to 16% damage increase on our finishers. So a little bit of extra burst damage there. Um, also, there's a way to extend it, but we probably aren't going to be doing that in PvP because it involves walking over a thing on the ground that it's going to appear. Uh, defeating an enemy lowers a cooldown of file. We don't really care about that. It's not going to happen. This one here is kind of cool. It turns your, your potion from a 20% heal. Um, it makes it heal 35% additional health. Um, so I'm assuming, you know, probably like high 20%, not to be confused with like 55% heal or some shit. Um, and yeah, you get it all over 10 seconds. So it turns into a hot. That could be potentially good. These middle things don't matter. And then the last one here. This is trash for rogue. It's not really that good. Pretty much every time you use a spell that's not a re repeat of another, you're going to gain 1% versatility. And I believe it stacks to 5%. So you can potentially have a 5% damage increase all the time. But as a, as a rogue, you're using a lot of the same repeat abilities. Just so you can build call points and stuff like that. It's not going to be realistic to stack unless you were like weaving fan of knives but it's not worth it for a five percent increase um so that's that and the i think there was one thing maybe worth mentioning in this middle tree here that i other than the one i talked about yeah this tree's not that cool it's eh, very eh. Uh, but overall it's my first favorite tree potential second favorite tree not really sure i'll make guides on this stuff in the future but for now that's gonna uh, do it for this video I gotta do Venthyr yet and Necrolord as well. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like.
comment and subscribe for more and we'll see you guys in the next video.